Hi, I'm Frank Rye from publicspace.net, and today I'm going to be talking about how to remove metadata from your photos and videos, why you might want to do that, and what specific metadata you might want to remove. Also late in this video, I will explain what kind of metadata you might want to add or change before you deliver files to your customers, or before you share them online on the internet. So let's first see what metadata actually is. So there's really two kinds of metadata. There's the embedded metadata, which is an intrinsic part of the file, so that every copy that you make of the file will have all of this metadata in it. And there's another kind of metadata that is only on your Mac, such as when a file was created or modified on the file system. So this metadata information may travel with the file or not. So what kind of metadata is there and what might some of the reasons be that you might want to remove it? Well, privacy is one really big reason. And I think probably the most dangerous metadata to leave in your files is your GPS position. Because of course your GPS position tells everybody exactly where you were when you took this picture. So this might reveal where you live. It might reveal where the people in the photos live. And it will always tell people exactly at which spot a particular picture was taken. Sometimes this is something that you do want to share. But you might also share it completely by accident. And you could get yourself or others into dangerous situations doing so. In general, most people don't want to advertise where they live or where they keep their possessions. So GPS data is something that you might want to remove in many situations. Another kind of embedded metadata that can be sensitive is the timestamp of when exactly you have shot the picture. This might reveal things that you don't want to reveal to your clients, such as when exactly you worked on their project, or about your personal routines, such as your school run, etc. So removing the actual timestamps is a good way of ensuring a little bit of extra privacy. Photo metadata also by default often contains details about your equipment that you may or may not want to share. It shows what model camera you used, details about the lens, the exposure and the focus settings, etc. One particular thing that might be sensitive is that some cameras will actually embed the serial numbers of the lens and camera inside of the files. This is great information for you, but you might not want to share this with others. In general, metadata can be very useful within your own workflow. It's good to know which camera, which lens and what settings you used. If you need to go back to a location or want to tag your photos with location names, the GPS data can be invaluable. You certainly want to have the right shooting date information so that your photos and videos sort chronologically in your photo management software. So this information is valuable within your own workflow, but you may not want to share all of it, or indeed any of it, with clients or the entire planet. So the best thing to do is almost always to remove the metadata as the last step before you deliver your photos or videos, or before you upload them to the internet and share them with other people. You might also not want people to know exactly when a file was created. And this even goes for documents. If you say to somebody, I don't have time to work on this document this week, and I'll start next week, you don't want them to see a file creation date that shows that you already started on the project a month ago, but have more urgent work for some other, perhaps more important client to finish off right now. Furthermore, many professionals give their deliverables a cleaner look by giving all the files on the USB stick or the archive the same creation and modification date. Standard practice is to choose noon on the day of the delivery. There's also metadata that you might want to add to your pictures. In particular, I'm thinking about adding a copyright notice especially if you're a professional photographer, but even as just a layman who uploads their photos to the internet, you might still want to have a copyright notice. So I'm also going to show you how to do that later in the video. Now I'm going to manipulate all this metadata with my Avatafine Attribute 7 program, and that's a Mac-only program. So the rest of this video is really more addressed to Macintosh users. So then the first thing I'm going to do is to start up Avatafine Attribute 7. Okay, so you have the basic interface here. Now I'm going to take some photos that I've taken during a recent trip to Utrecht and I'm going to drop them into the preview. So here you can see that the action I've selected is set file creation date. So you can see the file creation date and the file modified dates in these two columns. Better Finder Attribute 7 is a program that can do a lot of different things. And this is only one of its many functions. And what you see in these columns will depend on which action is selected. So right now everything seems okay here. But here you can see that the date is actually today while I'm recording this video. So I've just downloaded these pictures onto my Mac so that I can use them as demo files for this video. So while we are on this action, I can show you straight away how you can get a cleaner look by setting the file creation date to the same value for all of the files. 
So let's just take today at one o'clock as the date for all these files. I'm going to change all the files and now all of them have the same creation date. I can go a step further and set both the creation and modification dates for an even cleaner look. Now when I click onto an image, I get a thumbnail of the image itself, which is the train station in Utrecht. And I get all this metadata here. So what metadata have I got for this file? Here's the creation date on the file system, which I've just changed, the modification date on the file system, and then you see the datetime original here. This is actually part of the EXIF standard that almost all JPEG files, Hake, and even most raw photos use. That's the date that is used by a photo management program to know exactly when a photo was taken. The date time digitized is not set here because that's normally used for scans. And then the date time original usually isn't set. But there is a TIFF create date here, which is the same as the date time original. So we might as well leave it there. The media create date is something for videos. And the composite create date here is not an actual field in your photos. But it is a better find attribute seven's best guess as to when the photo was shot based on all the timestamps that are actually present in the file. In this example, it simply takes the daytime original because that is set. But if it wasn't, it would look at the daytime digitized, the TIFF create date, etc. until it finds an appropriate field. Then there's the version of the EXIF standard that everything is encoded in. Then there's values like the aperture value that was used to take the picture. Then you have some time zone offsets here as well. You have the exposure time, the F number, the focal length. And then you get to the exact GPS position. So this is a picture of a train station. That's not going to move. I don't live there. I don't mind people knowing where it is. But say you're taking a baby picture at home. Then this would give away the exact location where you live. Here we have the ISO number. Now in these fields, we can see that this was taken with my iPhone Pro Max camera. And the lens maker is Apple. The phone is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So I'm sharing all this information now, but it's not the kind of information that I might necessarily want to share if I was uploading this to a photo sharing site or a stock photography site. I might want to pretend that I used a really expensive camera with a premium lens. Or conversely, if I'm feeling a bit shy about revealing how much money I've spent on my gear, I might not want to advertise this. So what kind of things can we do with a better fun attributes? As you can see, we can do things like removing the file creation date or the file creation and modification date. I'll just show you what that looks like. When we set the file dates to 1904, in the finder they will appear as blank. I can also remove the active content creation timestamp. So that's the when that I want to remove. So here I can say, well, remove the EXIF datetime original, the datetime digitized, the IPTC time and date created, the QuickTime create date, the content creation, and the media creation date. So the last ones are really more for video formats. There's always an explanation of what these are just below them. If I click on Perform Changes, it will just remove them. So here I get the warning that doing this will actually change the underlying files and that I should only do this on files that I have a backup for. This is always good advice, even though it is very unlikely that you'll damage your photos. It's still always safer to have a backup. So I'm going to do it anyway here. Now we're going to have a look. The daytime original is gone and the daytime digitized is gone. Okay, so all the things that we've ticked here are now gone. But we still do have the aperture, for instance. So we haven't removed everything. We have just removed the EXIF content creation timestamps. Then we also have an option here where we can just remove individual fields. So for instance, you might not want people to know what specific model of camera you've got. And you might also want to remove, for instance, the aperture value. Who knows, or maybe the F number, or maybe individual GPS data fields. So you have a lot of choices here. So here we have the serial number as well. So the serial number is something that you probably don't want to leave in there because somebody might be messing around with your warranty, etc. We 
We have a lot more fields here, so let's just remove the make of the camera as well. So if we just do this here again, you'll see that when I go back here now, the lens make and model are still present, but there's no trace left of the camera specification. We can also do things like removing the geolocation metadata tags. So this is the GPS section, so which latitude, which longitude, etc. It has also the additional IPTC fields here. These aren't usually automatically embedded into your files by the camera, but you usually have to set these manually in your photo management software or within a better finder attributes. But if they're present, you can remove them here before you upload your photos. Now let's have a look at where the GPS data has gone. And there's no GPS data left. Finally, there's this triple metadata tags action that will just get rid of all the metadata that the better find attributes knows about. So you see now, there's nothing left in this file. This is now anonymous. It's only got its name and the location on the disk. Everything else is gone. Okay, so now to finish off this video, I'll show you how you can add your own copyright notice to the files. So first you want the add or change metadata tags action. I'm going to get rid of this line and I'm going to go to copyright. I'm going to say copyright Frank Rive 2023. Now I can add this here. And you see, here's my copyright. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you have found it to be useful. Please subscribe for more content and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.